thanks, thanks for being here, and I'm going to pass it over to our facilitator, Marcos. I'm wired, so we'll get that oh, one to that was nice feedback. Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Marcos Miller. Um, I'm a meeting facilitator, and I've been hired by um, Great Falls to, um, to get your input today. As James said, um, your input is really, really important. Your hopes, your dreams, your concerns, any questions. Um, that's often the spark of um, transformation of a place like the um, prime tanning mill that you have across the street, which is really dead center of, of your town. Um, so I'm here to capture your, your input. Um, it seems like a, a great opportunity. I know that the community has um, put a lot of work in through Envision Berwick of what the downtown um, can be like, and this is a critical component of that. Um, I facilitated the meeting a month ago. It was great to hear the, um, the community ideas and concepts, and it's clear that there is a great deal of energy and investment that the community has. And so, um, happy to work with, please come on in. Thanks. Happy to, uh, to work to help capture that and hopefully provide some, some meaningful guidance that Great Falls can use going forward. So with that, I'm just gonna open it up. We're gonna ask that people come to the podium and speak. We are being televised. And so by speaking to the microphone, you're able, we're able to capture your voice. Um, and I'll take comments and if it's, you cannot get to the microphone. We do have a microphone that can be handed around as well if you raise your hand. But we'll ask the people come up to the podium for comments. And now my job's to get it right. So please, don't be shy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Kyle Flanagan. I'm the founder and CEO of Prime Lightworks. Uh, it's a company I started out of California, and I'm from North Berwick, Maine, so I grew up here, and I've been interested in the site for a while because I think it has a lot of potential uh, for business and for the community, so thanks for having me. Um, so in the in the Berwick vision plan, um, renewable power uh, was featured prominently, and I think it's something that's very important to a lot of people in the community. So uh, my question uh, for Great Falls, I know you've done some really great work, and really excited to be part of this project and take in charge. Um, so what are your plans for you know, possibly to use um, you know, solar power, geothermal, and um, the hydropower from the river? And like looking forward, how could we incorporate that into you know, the construction plans for the site? Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. And just to clarify the, um, the process, the first part of the meeting, I'm just gonna capture your questions, your input. Um, this gives uh, Great Falls some time to Make sure they're hearing everything, and then the second half of the meeting will be a chance for them to respond too. So you'll get your answers. Okay, great. Who's next? Uh, Frank Underwood, Key Road. Um, one of the things that we learned during the downtown visioning was FaceTime with the people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to understand how Great Falls is going to proceed with making sure we've got some FaceTime with them because that exchange has, we learned, was very, very important where you had the opportunity for one on one mm -hmm. questioning. The other comment I wanted to offer is that anybody, if they get a chance to go up to Station Square, 70,000 square foot mm -hmm. facility, uh, Kevin Gray and I went up and we had a chance to go through that. Um, if you can't understand what someone's talking about if you visit that place you'll get a real good feel for what they're 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 about um, with what they've incorporated in there in a mixed-use setting it's a well mix of commercial some professional office space um, and residential and if you get up there the the way it fits into the community it fits in very well so I just offer that as a comment if you're passing through Gorham stop at um, uh, Station Square thank you thank you Come on in. Other comments? Ruth. <coughs> Ruth Blue from 64 Pine Hill Mobile Home Park. I'm hoping to see a lot to do with the arts downtown. Um, I met a person last night who does sculpture and he has a huge idea for a sculpture trail 
and I know there are other sculptors in town that would really fit right in with it. I think that would be really a wonderful thing. I would also like to see a gallery, an opportunity for pop-up artist shows, um, all kinds of art opportunities. I think that they really help a community grow and they're good for a community in all ways. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. And as um, you give comment, and I'm capturing the notes, if I need to get something right here, if I need to make any corrections, please let me know. I want to be sure that your input is being um, accurately reflected. Don't be shy, folks. You all came out to <coughs> participate. I'll come up under my Envision Berwick hat. Okay. And I read a lot of surveys and uh, Facebook comments, some more interesting than others. Um, I think it, from my perspective, a lot of this boils down to five common themes. Walkability, so just really everything about it, just being able to feel safe and scale everything, be able to walk around. Beautification. And Station Square is just, it's, it's breathtaking. Um, accessibility for all ages, families, our seniors. Connectivity, to go to Ruth's point. So, we, you know, we have an envision with trail, trail system and just being able to um, you making it walkable within the center, getting to the the Wilson Street parking lot, and then we're ready to branch out and, and connect everything together. And I think fun, fun for all ages, and a place that's worth worth going to for for all ages. Thank you, James. That's great input. Jesse Taylor, School Street. Um, so obviously I'm, I'm like very close to downtown, so I'm very invested in what will happen. Um, I think, you know, you're in a position where you need to compete a little bit with Summersworth because you, you've got to offer them, our community, something that they don't just cross over the bridge and get cheaper because the taxes are non-existent over there. And um, I really liked what Ruth said about arts because um, I think that could be great. I think it could be great for everybody, um, all ages, like a theater, you know, like the old time theater that Rochester has. It's not one, that's the closest theater around here. So that could be really cool. So again, I guess I would echo what's already been said as far as um, fun, something that can be interactive for all ages and um, something that I mean, I don't, I don't mean be catty, but something that you can't just walk over the bridge and get for cheaper. Mm -hmm. Something unique. Something unique. That's all. Thank you, Jesse. Hey, uh, Travis Mendola, River Street, just moved there. Um, just wanted to mention, uh, it'd be nice to have like a dog park section, maybe. Um, that was pretty much it. I, I'm really just here to hear the ideas, see what's going on, but uh, I wanted to mention that. So, thanks. Thanks, Travis. Thanks. A skating area? Skating. Ice skating? Yes. Or roller skating. <laughs> or skateboards. Okay. Yeah. Skateboards, yeah. We tried two years for a nice skating ring. So, a skate bar? So we know it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do realize you have to make money here, too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we all have to keep that. You gotta pay the bills, too. You have to right. make money here, and mm -hmm. you do, and to make it work for right. all of us. Hi. Um, Annie Cannon. I own a property on George Street and also on um, Worcester Road. I 
Um, I'm an acupuncturist and a yoga instructor, and I'm currently practicing in York, but I'd love to be able to bring my business to Berwick mm -hmm. and, you know, commute five minutes instead of half an hour. So from a business owner's perspective, um, I, like I'd love to be able to contribute to the Berwick economy that way. Um, and then just from a citizen perspective, some th sort of like small market, like I love the little market that South Berwick has, um, just some sort of grocery store that's, you know, small local sourced food, meats, vegetables, something like that. Thanks. Thank you. Really good idea so far on what could be fun and unique in the community. <clears throat> Tom Wright. Um, is one of the things that, you no, know, when we're looking at this property previously, and uh, one of the things that had come up. You know, with age-friendly housing and things like that, uh, medical offices. Mm -hmm. Is there currently, you know, you have to travel to Dover or York, you know, to go to medical practices. And um, I know that is York has a facility just up on Route 9, but something more comprehensive than just a walk-in clinic. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, but, you know, is the thing that, you know, talking to people for several years about this is the most common thing is the people in Berwick want a place to gather. They want a place where they can come together and be a community. Is <clears throat> we don't want to go to Dover. We don't want to go to Sanford. We want to be able to stay here in town and take care of our community. And I think that's one of the 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 most concerns I hear when I talk to people about this community. Thanks, Tom. Hi, come on in. Yeah. <coughs> so for those that are just arriving, we're just taking questions and comments right now. Your hopes um, for the redevelopment of um, the mill across the street, um, or concerns you might have also. Something you know you don't want to see there, would be worried about. Yeah. Maybe you're going to say the same thing I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we've had an Envision Berwick budget for the last few years, mm -hmm. and we've been able to earmark some funds for certain things, things such as signage, some benches, and things like a kiosk, public notification places, and stuff like that. Um, if there's some way in your advanced planning, Great Falls, that we can factor in some of our own funds mm -hmm. that we've got committed, towards helping them move their project forward. Uh, I think they would be open to getting that list. Great point. Wasn't my point, but yeah, I'll, I go that. <laughs> um, speaking uh, on behalf of, so we have a survey right now. We, um, by the way, if you go to the, the Berwick Main website, we're doing a survey for a comprehensive plan. We've got about 250 responses. But far and away, the number one response is people want restaurants downtown. Rest, restaurants and um, small grocery store. For my personal agenda, uh, music, music venue. <laughs> Hardware store would be great. Hardware store? Yeah. Yes. Especially since we don't have one person. Place for concerts. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I do want to let folks know also that if you're not comfortable speaking in public, um, we do have some cards you can, over on the far table, you'll see a suggestion box there. You can put your suggestions in there. And the Smith family plans on installing that suggestion box right across the street. So 24 hours a day, seven <coughs> days a week, you can go stuff your ideas in that box. <laughs> okay, Jennifer McCabe, Merriam Street. Um, I would like to see so I'm a mom of six. Um, I would like to see like winter activities for the kids. So if you're gonna do something like a park, like a skate park for like the summer, I'd like to see it turn into some sort of winter park, if that makes sense. Instead of just kind of letting the snow fall and leaving it there, I'd like to see like a, almost like a double use for mm -hmm. stuff like that. I 
concern raised at the last listening session, I was not thrilled about the response to sustainability. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear more about that. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Sustainability. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Whether or not we would be installing solar panels, geothermal, things like that, I believe the response was they're not sure if it would be profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really good enough for the youth. Okay. We want to see solar panels. Mm -hmm. and just to emphasize that point, because I'd already mentioned it, can we also put hydropower and geothermal? I can, yep. Yeah. yeah, please. Steve Eldridge, town manager. One of the things I've heard, and I haven't heard here, is an incubator uh, facility for with like, an internet cafe or just a place where people can come and have internet connections and possibly just start up a con you know, conducting business availability, which we could expand, but more of an incubator. Steve, would you put like a um, co-working space yes. in that too? Just like to follow up on that point about an incubator uh, my company is a member company at Greentown Labs in mm -hmm. Somerville and they have an amazing yeah, machine shop co-working space a hundred companies under one roof and I've actually thought about uh, you know it you don't need a ton of square feet you know 10,000 20,000 could be more but you know to, to have a draw of many young companies all under one roof would bring an enormous amount of you know, business to the area so like you know, a clean technology incubator after Greentown Labs as an example that'd be Great place to start. Great, thanks, Kyle. Hi. Hi, I'm Allison St. Laurent with the Falls Chamber of Commerce. Um, one of the questions that I keep hearing with our members is about the general aesthetic and design of whatever goes over there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important to this area that it sticks with the brick facade um, and fits in nicely with this area. Um, and doesn't disrespect the historical significance of the area. <coughs> Thank you, Allison. And to piggyback on that, is seeing um, Berwick and Summersworth as one larger, I guess, economic region and continuing the collaborative efforts with Summersworth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Allison's the new uh, ex executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Yep, uh, this is my third day on the job. Other thoughts or maybe reactions to some things that have already been said? Well, this is a listening session, and I'm, I've been listening. Okay. <laughs> and I'm pretty excited. My name is Peter Cook. I'm a resident of Berwick. I'm a farmer out at the edge of town. I'm concerned. I'm very concerned, like all the residents of Berwick are. The children graduating from Noble High School this year have only known in their lives an empty non-productive space in the center of town. It looks like and feels like things are going to change and that delights me and I think it delights everyone because I think we're on the eve of something very very special and very very big. I'd like to address big picture. Big picture I mean going beyond the borders of this magic treasure spot in the center of town and look at the whole town as a whole. Because when we envision Berwick, we're really talking about a town, a rural town, where rural values are still very much in place. 
And we want that feeling to be throughout the town, not two different towns, the downtown space versus the rural space. <clears throat> In looking at big picture, I think there's a number of things that we can consider, and perhaps some of those that we have not considered thus far. If we come over the bridge <coughs> from Summersworth and turn right, and then turn left like we all do so often, we see a bank, a bank that is the product of a renovated building and is really a very key business in our town. That's followed by another necessary business, Dairy Delight, a seasonal business that has proved itself to be a popular destination. Going on, we have a fire department that has expressed, along with the police department, their need to be centralized. And I think that their activities on behalf of our whole town are really going to rely on a very special development of this central space. I'm not saying they're going to live there, but they're going to be working around and through that. If we continue up the street, we have a number of residential rentals. A high percentage of them are the rentals. And then we get to the corner of Allen Street, which is probably one of the most well-traveled intersections. And there, next to an apartment house that has really developed over the years into a, I'm sure a lot of money and thought went into that edifice. But right next to it is a very large dumpster, a green dumpster that is often overflowing with refuge. In fact, recently, a large mattress was obscuring the route signs for not Route 9, Allen Street, and so on. I talked to a planning board member about it, just mentioned it in passing. He said, well, Peter, that's legal. And that might just be part of the problem. If we cross over the street and look at Cumberland Farms, which is one of our largest businesses, one of the largest businesses, a lot of planning went into drainage, the fenestration, and so on. But it's a major traffic jam because we have, not only have we created a facility for diesel, we have also have to have all the merchandise that is delivered to that very successful business, very entitled business, but it blocks traffic and people often can't get in there. They have a very viable business, a needed business, but if we look at the label convenience store, it's not so convenient when people are trying to get in and out of there because there's a traffic jam. If we continue up the street, this is not going to be a long lecture, I can assure you. <laughs> we can look up and we can see a cluster of manufactured houses. Those houses, I'm sure, are lived in by people who are very substantial, wonderful citizens in our town. Let me say that. Wonderful citizens who've made their home in Berwick. But if we have lots of rentals and lots of manufactured housing and businesses that are not so convenient in many ways, that will impact the kinds of thinking that the Smith family and Great Works or Great, Great Falls Construction are going to engage in. Vice President, I think it's Cindy, is it Cindy Smith? She said, I've read in the paper, <coughs> that she would love to see the post office and the library be more centralized, or I'm paraphrasing, but in a very centralized area. Those, those great facilities have been fostered by residents here. A dear family donated their residential property for the library, and instead of using it as a capital asset for a library, the library was built on that property. So what I'm saying is, I'm hoping that a lot of the thinking is going to be big picture, looking at the whole community in a way. It has to be a partnership. It's a partnership not only between the town fathers and all the people who serve on so many wonderful committees, but it's also got to be a partnership with the whole community. And these listening sessions 
as I think Frank indicated, we need a lot of them. We need an ongoing dialogue to really bring this about so there's a balance, a balance so all different strata and interest areas are served by such a key and dominant piece of property. Thank you. I hope I haven't been too long. Thank you, sir. Whoop. I just want to go on record and say we do have a town ordinance for trash, and that is not acceptable. <laughs> so we will look into that. Thank you. <laughs> Other hopes, dreams, good ideas. Hi, Jesse Taylor again. Um, I hear a lot of great ideas about what we want, but nobody's speaking up about what we don't want. And I think that's equally important. Um, for me, what I, what I really don't want, it may be a need in the community, but I'm concerned about um, low-income housing or a mass. I mean, I think we could mimic a little bit what um, South Berwick has, where they've got shops and they've got some housing above that, but nothing that's going to overwhelm us as far as you know a big apartment complex, that kind of thing, is something I really would <coughs> like to see. That's all. Thank you, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to build upon what James said earlier about the two cities coming together and being collaborative. Um, it's really important to Summersworth and to the Falls Chamber of Commerce members that there is a cohesive flow between the two cities and that we work together in such a way that drives people from one community to another and back again. So something, some sort of way to tie it all in so that it flows nicely from summer's worth. Thank you. <coughs> Other things that people want or don't want. I would just ask the Smiths if they've been, because it's been a month, um, if they have received uh, suggestions, if they could just share those with, with the group, because it might not have come up on uh, one of the panel boards that you've been putting mm -hmm. together, but they may have received it in a paper form. Thank you. George Lovejoy from Key Road. Um, been around the area my whole life, Rochester, East Rochester. And she beat me to the don't want. Mm -hmm. What I <coughs> don't want to see is um, I drive through Rochester a lot at night. I don't want to see tattoo parlors. I don't want to see e cigarette shops. And I don't want to see marijuana sales, you know, anywhere near town. Um, having five grandkids, I hate to see. Anything that encourages them to go that way. <coughs> Thank you, George. Uh, Kyle Flanagan. You know, another thing we don't want is chains. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see it like when like the Staples goes down the building, like the building construction that's been touched on before. We like brick, you know, instead of like plastic. Uh, yeah, something authentic and local. We want local businesses instead of chains. Mm -hmm. um, going off the not wanting more low income housing, lots of apartments. Um, we have to think about parking too for businesses as a potential business owner for that space. I don't want my patients to have to walk a long ways to come to see me. Um, and I think all of the businesses would prefer having parking accessible. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to just say one more thing about low income housing. Mm -hmm. I don't want Berwick to be exclusive. I think that we should 
include all people, regardless of their income. Right, I, I'll take this opportunity to talk about housing, low-income housing. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. Um, parking is a great, a great topic too. Um, so we can all, we all should admit we're all a little prejudiced, and we should, we should speak to it. I see a lot of overt prejudice against poor people, and it's, it's, it's sad. But what we, what the low-income housing problem is, without people really speaking to it, people have a problem with the tenants. Right? They have a problem with people that are transient. So Great Falls Construction, they're they're gonna manage their building and they're gonna vet their they're gonna vet their tenants. They're not gonna allow they're not gonna have somebody rent in their apartment that isn't gonna take care of their <coughs> their, their <coughs> room. Um, and I know a big concern is kids in the school system. Um, they can probably more accurately um, fill in the numbers, but there's like 70 people living in their uh, station square, and there's two kids added to the school system. And it's entirely possible to add a, a child to the school system and for it not to cost whatever you think the number is. It depends on capacity levels. Um, parking is is always is mostly a perception issue, which can be dealt with with signage. Um, obviously, we want to have on street parking um, enough that you can go into the building. But walking, I mean, if you look at all the best cities, you gotta walk, right? I'm thinking more of balancing out like parking and here's, you said signage, like parking for apartments versus parking for yeah. businesses, like business parking out front that's yeah. going to be short term versus um, maybe like a little bit of a walk for apartment parking yep. so that all the residents aren't taking up the space right mm -hmm. in front of them. And that, that's the thing. Yeah, that's a good, that's a great point of having a diverse 15 minute parking, hour parking, designated parking, and that's something that the town can work out with Great Falls Construction. Yep. Okay. Thanks for that clarification there. I want to add to the low-income housing as well. Mm -hmm. Berwick definitely has a need for elderly housing. So I think sometimes too that the kinds of um, back and forth that we just had really can help clarify, and it's not just parking, but what specifically do you need in parking, and you need parking for residents and parking for businesses and that they're not competing for the same spot. So the more that you guys can engage in that conversation and I can help facilitate that conversation, I think the more precise information you can give to Great Falls and that's really powerful. It's great that they hear, you know, that yes, you want this or no, you don't want that. But it's the subtleties and the gray area in between, that's the needle they're gonna have to thread. And so the more we can define that together as a community, the more information they have to do that too. So I encourage your, your input. Um, if you wanted to follow up on things that have already been said um, and maybe help clarify that a little bit or be more precise, I invite you to do that, please. You probably have Maybe about 10 more minutes, if needed, before we um, give the Smiths a chance to respond. Yeah, just following on that theme, um, I think one thing we're touching on, has it's been said, is balance. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we're so much concerned about low-income housing as we are a lack of workforce housing. Uh, and, and that's a theme that's come up before, is like, we need workforce housing in this space. And um, let's see how to put it. Well, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of storefronts. I think we need things like butchers, coffee shops. I mean, places where people are going to come and you know spend money. I think we also need you know skilled labor, you know, and skilled labor and the workforce housing would go together. So I think I think it's really important to strike a balance of all these things, like not to exclude, say, low income, but make sure we have workforce, and like 
you know, not to say we only need storefront and no manufacturing. I think all of these things work together. And, you know, and, and especially the skilled labor and the workforce housing, it's going to drive up the median income. It's going to support a lot of the other businesses that we want here. Thank you. Other questions and comments? <clears throat> I'm Paula Lapore, president of the Berwick Library Association. And we are, would very much, um, the library would very much like to be uh, the community center, but where we're located now, <coughs> as opposed to being down in the village. <coughs> So you'd like to stay in your location? Yeah, but and it's like a half mile away from <clears throat> from downtown. But be more as a of a community center. Yeah, well, that's what we're looking at, and and basically we're a community center now. Um, we have a senior program and youth programs, and it's a very active part time library right now as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to make more of a comment about Berwick itself. You know, this is the second listening session we've had. Uh, the <coughs> first one had over 100 people in it. This one has, you know, 30 or so people in it. You know, and it's really good that people come out for these types of things. You know, too many times when we try to do things in Berwick is we get the same five or six people over and over and over again coming out. Is the other thing I want to comment on is at the previous listening session and this one is the number of young people who have come up to be involved is for too many years is too many people on the boards and the commissions and everything look too much like me. Gray hair, getting old, and we need more younger people to be involved. And I think this is an excellent opportunity to get the young people involved is they seem to be, you know, really looking forward to what's coming in Berwick and I am going to encourage them all to keep at it and please volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <coughs> Tom, I'm going to Taken that you're not just talking about participation in boards and things, but really being part of the Everything. envisioning. Yes. What's you know, like I said, I'm encouraged with the questions that came up. Yeah. You know, during the two sessions. Great. Um, I'm sure there's no exact answer for this, but any input that you could give us as to timeline, I think we're all a little eager and would be curious to hear that. Definitely a question that came up before. Um, so I think it's great that you're doing these listening sessions. I think this is a huge part of making sure that whatever you build is going to work for the whole community. Um, and I just want to make sure that as you continue on with the plans, you keep the public informed and you keep these listening sessions going. Um, and as you formulate your plan and what you expect to become of it, to keep us involved along the way. Because um, it's easy to go from this listening session um, and then not talk or hear from each other for months and months and months and then all of a sudden something's being built and everyone's wondering what's going on. Um, so if, this is awesome and I just hope you keep it going all the way along the way. Great, good. Um, on the front, at the front table there are some slips of paper with contact information. Um, there's. So there's a number of ways that you can stay engaged too, whether it's just sending an email to um, Great Falls. There's also um, the town Facebook page where I think a lot of information can be posted to. So there are a number of vehicles in which that the communication can go back and forth and you can be kept up to date. Um, but I think this is a 
something that, from my conversations with the Smith family, this is really important. So I think that the suggestion box indicates, you know, they want to keep that dialogue going. Any um, final questions or comments from people before Great Falls responds to some of these points? No? All right. John, do you want to start? Maybe, uh, John, I can just walk, we can just walk us through the, um, the topics. Um, make sure that. So a couple times, um, the idea of renewable power came up, what kind of plans are, whether it's solar, geothermal, hydro. Is there anything else, Kyle? Those are the three big ones. Sorry, thank you. No nuclear there. Not right now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Marcos. Can you can you hear me? Does this work? That's for TV only. Oh, it's only for TV. Sorry. All right. Okay. You need it. Though. You need it. I do need it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I, so I'm going to get to that in just a sec, Marcos. I just want to take a second to thank everyone for coming here today. I know it's the middle of the day, and we chose one in the evening and one during the day to just to make sure, hopefully, that that allows people to get here in the evening. Um, and we uh, we really appreciate this. I think, uh, you know, when James first introduced us, uh, I, I want to point out, I think he had a little Freudian slip there because he said that this was our second, he started, he, he, he said a listening session, but what he really said to it was uh, this is our second learning session. <laughs> and really, that's, that's what it is. Um, you know, we're, we're here um, to just learn about what what's gone on what's happened and how we can sort of pick up the ball and move it forward and we've been inundated with information in the last mm -hmm. couple of months we spent a lot of time up until halloween we had spent a lot of time uh but our time had been focused on due diligence on the property and our due diligence was really focused on environmental pitfalls challenges um we looked at that property and we we saw that if we could manage those events and those issues and sort of get our arms around those uh, that it was obvious to us we could really do something special with the property so we bless you that was our um the way in which we we uh sort of have addressed this whole process and so we've really been exercising a lot of i would say self-discipline in uh not thinking too far ahead without having both of these listening sessions. So the way I've described it is we've inserted a circle in the rim at the top of the funnel. That's what we've been doing to date. And we're pretty excited to sort of start the process of working our way down that funnel. Um, these two meetings are a very important part of that process. And so, and, I, and I'll speak to the, you know, further communications when we get to that point. But um, I, Cindy is here today. She's the Vice President of Great Falls and my wife as well, and uh, two of our children are here with us. Julie is in business development, and she is the one that you'll communicate with. Her name and email is on that list, and um, so that's who you will be communicating with if you communicate that way. And Joe is in the office as a project administrator, and he joined us today to just to just uh, sort of see what's going on down here. So um, that sort of proves we're a small family business out of Gorham. That's, that's where we came from, so. All right, Marcos, uh, your question was around sustainability. Um, and renewable power, solar, renewable power. geothermal, <laughs> hydro. Okay. So um, to address that, uh, I think, um, you know, first, there's always, I should sort of clear up one of the comments, I think, about um, the profitability side of it. We're definitely always going to process the economics on it. We sort we have to do that. Um, Unless we were the state of Maine, if you saw the paper this morning, then we wouldn't have to. We could just put what we wanted up and, and we could you know, take a few decades to make it pay for itself. However, uh, that's not the only part of the equation. And I think that, um, you know, sustainability and especially sustainability in construction is evolving very quickly. And, uh, you know, if you've, some of our meetings we've had lately, I think, are, are, are proof that we can change, that we listen to what's going on and we pay attention and, um, and we can change. I think we have a huge opportunity for um, incorporating sustainability into the development across the street. 
Um, however, we, we've been circling the top of the funnel. We've been listening and hearing and talking. We've had meetings with engineers, we've had meetings with architects, and we're just sort of gathering information. Um, I do think that sustainability will be a much bigger part of this project than it has been for any of our prior development projects of our own. We've worked on many different projects that have incorporated sustainability um, efforts in it. But I think it's, you know, for us, it's really time. And our, our efforts, you know, prior to this, have really been focused on building envelopes and making sure that we increase um, our, our um, the, you know, the, our, va our values, the air tightness around building envelopes so that whatever we put into it um, takes less. It takes less to heat, it takes less to cool it. Um, so I can't, as far as renewable power, don't, don't have a good direct answer for that yet. I can tell you that we, uh, one of our meetings yesterday, and again, we haven't assembled the team, we're working on doing that, but in a meeting that we had yesterday, we did have a, um, you know, a sustainability um, team at the table and we're having discussions with them. We've met with an architect that has a strong um, bias towards uh, sustainability and lots of experience in it. So uh, I think on all of those fronts, it's definitely going to be a, a big part of the equation. Um, and I'm sorry that's not direct. There is no direct information there other than it is part of the equation. It's, it's uh, at the table and we're discussing it. Great. John, the next one was about uh, space time between the development team and the community, and that's come up a couple times in communication and whatnot. Yeah. So as we move forward in this project and we, we begin to establish an office next door um, and, and all that, there'll be more and more opportunities for face time. Um, prior to that, we will, um, I mean, based on one of the notes I jotted down, uh, you know, to, to, to move in keeping with more communication, that is our goal. I can tell you that we're going to be very busy working on this, so time could slip by. So an easy way to manage around that is to just input some dates right now for meetings um, so they're already on the calendar. And I think that that's what we'll be doing initially. Um, and we can we can work with, uh, probably with, I assume with James on that or with whoever, we can get that information out to the community so that anyone is interested, there'll be something uh, built into the calendar to just get updates. Uh, Julie, uh, with possibly some help with Joey, will be uh, updating social media and things like that, so there'll be opportunities that way. That's not FaceTime, though, Frank, I get it. And so I think, uh, you know, we, and I... Uh, I mean old-fashioned FaceTime. Right, know, I understand, yeah, I understand, yeah. 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 Right, yeah, so that'll be there. Um, I, I think that um, that's how we're going to do it for now. We'll put something on the calendar. Um, I know that one of your comments in the past had been set up an office right down here in the village, and we've definitely heard that. Um, I think that we will have a construction office down here, and when we do, anybody is welcome to you know to stop in there and, and communicate. Um, we do. Cindy really um, wanted the suggestion box on site so that people have an opportunity to put information in again not FaceTime but a way to communicate and a different way to communicate um, so those are some of the things that we'll be doing Great. Um, another issue that came up repeatedly John was this idea of the arts in the downtown whether it was a sculpture trail the need for galleries or pop-up art space somebody mentioned later on you know theater space also um, any response to those comments uh, yes, so uh, we have we have experience in, in working directly with the local arts alliance. We we actually bought a property and and uh, worked with them for them to be able to lease it lease it back. It was arranged right from the get go so they could do arts programming in the space. And that now uh, they've grown. This has been in progress for years, and they've grown to a an, an arts alliance that services over a hundred uh, kids in town as well as other art programming for adults uh, and we do we value that we think it's important um, we I, I guess it might be a stretch to call us artists I guess it depends on what you're looking at so we know but we, we definitely recognize it's very important and that adds to a sense of place in any community I would say that for and, and so we we actually just came up in, in our own internal discussion the other day it, specifically a sculpture trail type place came up um, what's what's needed there 
is the sculptor, is the artist. And I heard today from the comment that there is a local one, which is very interesting. So we need to make sure that we get connected with those people to, um, to, you know, to see what they have in mind. And um, as we look at the um, sort of this, this village design, we can um, figure out where those things will fit in. As far as the gallery, pop-up, um, art shows, things like that, um, we definitely, you know, there'll be public space uh, in in this. We're gonna, we need to incorporate that in, as, you know, for the music as well, um, and, and that, so for sort of uh, exterior type events, that might suffice for that as well. We'll keep that in mind as we work through the design. For interior space, like gallery type space, um, you know, as we get to planning buildings, We'll, we'll, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Um, I, I can tell you, and it, it, was, it was spoken to a little bit, I mean, we, we need tenants, we need people, uh, partners to come in and do business in this area. And I think we can create the space, we can create the design, get the pre-work in place, um, which actually is simply pick up the ball. One thing I should note is that we wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for the good work of all the people around the table here for the last, I, I'm gonna say 10 or 15 is whatever it is, um, if you dial back in time and we look at the obstacles in place on that property, we wouldn't have the, the bandwidth to deal with that. So I know it seems like nothing's happened on that property uh, you know, to some degree, but when we look at it, we see that a ton of work has happened on that property and it's really got it to the point where we can actually uh, see a, really a viable path forward with it. So. Um, I want to just slip that in. So I think uh, when it comes to the um, to those spaces, uh, you know, we'll we'll definitely be keeping that in mind. And hopefully, as we meet the um, the art community and get to know uh, the people better, hopefully we can come up with a scenario that makes sense there. Great. Um, James had mentioned uh, some major themes from the Envision Berwick downtown plan: walkability, beautification accessibility for all ages, connectivity, and fun for all ages. A place that's worth going to. Uh, yeah, and I can't, can't agree more. I mean, those are all things that we um, pay close attention to because those are what make it work. And, and if we fail on any of those fronts, then the sense of place isn't as complete as it can be. And if it's not, it's not a place where people want to go. So it becomes uh, no longer as viable as it can be. So those are good good bullet points and they're definitely right on our radar screen. And sort of similar to that was the uh, the issue that you need to comp compete with Summersworth. There's services over there, <coughs> tax-free sales, um, and so the need to offer something different, whether it's arts or theater, or something unique that really um, is a compelling contrast to what Summersworth offers. Yeah, and that's a point point well taken. Um, I think there's been two you know two sides that one is compete with, and the other is coexist with, or you know it was maybe it was said a little differently. Um, and I think that you know both of those um, you know are are definitely um, again on, on our radar. We we understand it, and we can't um, <coughs> we have to understand the impact of that and how this development will impact Summersworth. We're going to lump the next two together because they're really about some sort of outdoor uses, a dog park, um, spaces, or skating, whether it's ice skating, roller skating, or a skate park. Your thoughts about sort of public spaces like that? So I think the good ideas. Um, I, I think that, you know, when we look at space planning, we're going to have to figure out what we have room for. Um, I particularly like the dog park because kids these days seem to be having dogs instead of kids. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> you know, that's really uh, every way you go. You, you see young young couples with dogs, so that's definitely a really important one. And um, and the skate park, I, I think it's it's always a good idea um, to have opportunities like that. Whether there's a place on on that property, whether they room for it, I just don't know. Um, some other themes that came up repeatedly were spaces for small businesses, storefronts, um, and some particular uses, whether it's markets or locally sourced grocers, yoga studio. Um, what do you envision for retail development? So ideally all of that. 
I think that you know as we as we talk about um, how we're gonna sort of match to plan this site, uh, we're, we're gonna work our way through um, it, with our givens initially, which you know we're gonna first process the existing <coughs> buildings that are there and confirm whether or not they're viable, whether they should stay, whether they should not. Um, then we're going to look at some of our other uses, which we think should be in a, you know, in a downtown and have have seen interest from people, um, which are, are going to require certain things, like if you know, uh, if it's a business, uh, whatever, a bank or credit union, a coffee shop or something that needs a drive-through, we got to start to figure out how how those fit into place, um, and then we just sort of begin to work down from there, and then we look at infill space and have our community space in there. So. There's a lot to it. We're excited to get to that point, um, but it doesn't work if we don't have small business space. I think another question that was brought up was chains, and you know, no offense to chains, uh, they do have a place. Um, I think that what we envision here in a more village setting uh, are more local merchants doing things. I, I, I don't. I'm not saying that we won't have a chain in there. I can't say that because we're really in the design phase. I can say that our desire. And our thinking is more along the lines of more local um, type <coughs> businesses in a, in a village setting. Uh, and I think it fits well with the, you know, when you look at villages, um, the, the demographics generally don't, don't play well with what national chains are looking for. And so I think it's, it's not a stretch to just say that, you know, this is not the place necessarily for chains. Great. Um. Medical offices and something that offers maybe more comprehensive service than um, just short-term care. Yeah, I think that's a great a great use. Uh, I think we'd easily accommodate something like that. It will just depend on if we, um, you know, if what the initiative of the. Uh, I mean, it, we need to look at that. It's medical offices are a great use, and that's a, that's something that the community needs. Um, and, and is best served on a local level for certain services. Um, I, you know, a lot of the medical stuff lately that we've seen has certainly been the, the you know chains popping up all over the place. And um, so, you know, back to the chain discussion, whether that's relevant or not, we just we don't know yet. But um, that's absolutely a, a vital part of um, of a village center having those types of services. Um. Once again, places to gather as a community. You know, if you wanted to speak more about that, you already touched upon it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, it is going to be, it's an important part of our planning process for this project. Um, we're, we're looking to create a sense of place that when you're there, you're comfortable, mm -hmm. you're safe, you can have fun, and businesses can do business and people can live. And, and this is not a new concept either, by the way. What, what we're looking to do is not a new concept. Um, we are. We have an opportunity, a very unique opportunity. In, in Gorham, we've been able to do a building here and a building there, right? And you know, we've we've done a few things over the years, and we've we've enjoyed it, and it's been great. Um, here, we have a much better opportunity because we have an entire parcel in the middle of the village, um, not restricted by lot lines except the outer boundaries, right? So we're not. We're not going to um, subdivide this property. Well, well, we're not going to, you know, subdivide into smaller lots and sell those lots off. Uh, in doing, if we were to chase that model, then we have setback issues to deal with. We have specific parking related to specific building issues to deal with. Um, so our our model is to uh, to build it and lease the spaces out. That's so we're we're kind of here for the long haul on it. But that also removes. Uh, boundaries and it really allows us to be free to design which really if you look back years and years ago before zoning you were able to do that and uh, we're going to be able to do that here in this particular case because of how we're going about it so we think that just offers a, a bit of a unique opportunity that you don't generally see if you own one or two properties then you've got you've got neighbors and you can do what you can do and you have to you have to have setbacks from them but if we are going to put a few buildings inside this, we can just understand how they go together best and we're not, we're not <coughs> restricted by uh, property lines. Frank, did you have yeah, something? Yeah, I just want to comment. When we, we first moved the town, <coughs> they used to have 
old home day or whatever it was and they would shut off the downtown and everything would happen there uh, they've since moved that out to a, a ball field and not much happens um, but don't rule out closing the streets for events and things along that that line because we've done that twice this summer with the, with the concert that James and them promoted so public gathering could be closing those those streets out as well. Yeah, okay, thanks. I mean, what we'll be doing in our design is, is sort of <coughs> figuring out that space and what can be done in it. It'll really be up to the community as to how it gets used and, and, and um, you know, obviously there'll be a community that lives there that will be utilizing it from time to time, but the greater community, uh, you know, how, how that space gets programmed will really be up to everybody. Um, the other was a note that I think maybe came from Frank that, um, Envision Berwick can be, should be seen as a partner. They have some funding. They have their own set of projects, too. There might be small infrastructure projects. Um, I think park benches was one thing mentioned. There's a, a list of those, though. Um, but there might be opportunities for um, Envision Berwick to, to support some of your work and contribute to help meet some of their own goals as well. Great. Yeah, I would hope as we will put our design together and we'll be, um, you know, we'll be sharing that in a public setting a few times before it goes to planning board, um, and and hopefully uh, that you know that resource can be tapped for betterments to what we're doing. You know, that would be an ideal scenario and a good use of that to just if you find an opportunity in what we're doing where um, you could offer a betterment, then that would be great to hear on that. Um. Probably something we've already touched on, but specific uh, retail uses, hardware stores, restaurants, music venues, and all these contribute, come back to that idea of uh, community space where people meet each other. Right, yeah, and I think that just flows right into what we're looking to do. Yeah. Um, we talked about the dog park and skating. Did you want to say anything else about winter activities? I think particularly the point was year-round programming, creating a space where it's not going to be dead mm -hmm. four months out of the year, but it's got uses um, throughout the year and really right. something that draws kids and families in. Right. And that's six months out of the year now, now Marcos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that point well taken on that, and we, you know, as we move through our design, we definitely want to pay attention to that. Uh, we talked about sustainability. Um, another idea that was shared was the idea of an incubator facility, whether it's an internet cafe, co-working spaces, uh, the Greentown Labs, which sounds more like a maker space perhaps, um, that that might be an ideal tenant um, to bring a range of ages and some more economic activity um, into the downtown. Yeah, and I, I, I like that. That's a great, uh, it, it would be great, it, it, absolutely, if we can achieve that. I think that, uh, you know, one of the big things, and I've, I've touched upon it a little bit, and I know that, you know, Julie's, the, the volume of, of um, communication will certainly ramp up here, but um, our, you know, we're going to look at the sort of the overall master plan design of the site and come up with sort of what, what our thoughts are there, and we'll get to a point where we're in good shape with that. And then, you know, we, we have a list of uh, tenants that would like to be in there, that would like to do business there, um, and we, I mean, it's a physical list. Julie has the list written down, and when it's time, we'll be talking more and more, I think, you know, with those team members. For these uses that we really want to um, sort of be a little more proactive on, I think it's important. We'll keep that in mind, um, and I think, you know, Kyle, if you have suggestions for instance please reach out to myself Julia whatever and, and um, you know see how we can incorporate that into the into the mix Thank that would be great great um, other comments about the aesthetics of the development and that it's sort of respectful of the design of the community and the historical traditions um, and the architecture as a mention of brick Berwick likes its brick yeah yeah yeah, uh, that I think that that you know that one element we we focus a lot on that. We really work hard on that. And that's the reason why you know as a team we realized a long time ago we're not really good at building and selling things. Um, you know, like just sort of flipping, developing and selling. We're not we're not really good at that because what we want to do, 
uh, we, we sort of do it for the long haul. We have a, a, a bigger picture view of it, and which means we generally, you know, we put a little more detail into what we're doing. We pay attention to the aesthetics. Um, I'm going to go on record right now as saying I cannot guarantee that everything will be brick on these buildings, okay? because that's, you know, that obviously that's relatively costly. I can promise that um, aesthetics, architecture, and detail will be at the forefront of what we're doing, and we'll be communicating that that out um, as we go along. We have our concept plans that will show, um, and, but I, you know, nor did, and I know no one's suggesting everything brick, but we don't want everything brick in there. You know, you, you know, some brick, some single story, some two story, maybe some three, you know, whatever it may be, but it's got to be a little diverse mixture of properties in order to. Um, in order to really come together well we've actually had discussions about when we source our, our uh, you know architectural team for this do we want to limit it to just one um, if we have one team who's trying to be diverse uh, in what they're putting together maybe they are maybe they aren't but if you have a couple of different architects that are tasked with doing a few different things um, maybe working with one sort of you know master planner to make sure it all it follows the same vision that might be uh, a, a way that we choose to go in order to make sure that we sort of get a little bit of, of diversity in there because we absolutely don't want to um, make it look like we just sort of plop this all down in you know one two or three year time period and, and there it sits as a time capsule for a long time it has to be it has to have some uh, you know different sizes textures and, and, and appear that it didn't just happen you know in this in this block of time that we're talking about nice um, I think it was something we talked about earlier but uh, the collaborative efforts between Berwick and Summersworth and that that um, I think both these communities are really working at developing a partnership mm. so it's more than competition Exactly. Collaboration. Yeah, and I would say to date we've done uh, we've done nothing with that. So we definitely I'm glad the point was brought up today, and it's something that we really should figure out uh, what our role is in that, and you know how much more uh, we can do to accomplish that. Um, the next comment was touched on a number of points. One, just that there's been a generation that hasn't seen anything there, and concerned that that's the norm, and um, but also hope that there's um, that there's a future there, and that that future is really talks about opportunity for future generations. Um, the big vision comments of that gentleman were about the rural values of the neighborhood or the community and that the town center, um, what happens there should really be integrated into those values and help to bring the community together as opposed to creating two separate things. Um, also touched on uh, some needs of the police department and the fire department that they're exploring um, drainage and traffic issues um, I think the the big theme there was in balancing the the different needs and the all the components that make Berwick special yeah and those those are really <clears throat> uh, great points um, I think especially you know our meetings are focused on this particular parcel and it's great to <coughs> to have that expanded, um, have that expanding, and realize that as we think about this parcel, it's not just this parcel, but but, but the uh, really the village as a whole. Um, I think that, uh, you know, some of the, I think that might have sparked a conversation <coughs> about, um, you know, a few different things, low-income housing of one that, that there were a few comments about. I'd like to speak to that in a second, but I think that, you know, one of the things James brought up is, the, you know, we do, um, our this project will be developed and they'll be will be leasing out to tenants and, and really we, you know partnering with people to make this happen so we're we're involved and we're invested for quite some time um that really doesn't guarantee a thing but it get, you know we we've got a lot um sort of at stake and intend to be involved for quite some time <laughs> Um, and you know, I've we have uh, we do have tenants now, and we have a, a wide variety of tenants. And you know, the the designation of market rate versus low income, in our experience, is really no indication on on um, sort of what type of people we're working with. We get the most, you know, outstanding people in in all categories of of um, income levels. So, I think when we look at what we're doing on this property, it's really going to focus. What's going to drive it? <coughs> is what's going on in, in the area, 
um, how much <coughs> affordable housing is already or official designated affordable housing is already in play, um, how much is needed, and then what we need to do, you know, we have to be, we have to focus on this parcel and see what we think makes sense in this parcel. Um, you know, this is right in the center, so it's really important to get it right. And again, we don't know, you know, getting it right is what's what we're hoping to achieve as we uh, sort of hit the drawing board in the next uh, few months here. But the balance between low income workforce or market rate housing is is yet is to be determined. Um, and. You know, we, we have we have had uh, discussions or a, a reach out from affordable housing developers that say if there is a you know a, a component there for that, we'd love to talk. Um, we, but we're not um, we're not there yet. We don't know how many, whether it's going to be you know ten units or, or thirty units on on the, We just don't really know what's going to be on the site yet. Um, speaking about uh, low income housing. I think later on, James had mentioned too that the, he drew a distinction between um, the quality of tenants and probably also management of those kinds of residential properties versus the income of tenants. Can you talk a little bit about um, your management practices <coughs> with your sites? Uh, I can, yes, absolutely. We have a full-time um, property manager in our office and then we have a, a full-time property <coughs> maintenance technician who's constantly circulating around to our properties. Um, Melinda in our office is a property manager, communicates uh, routinely with our tenants, performs annual inspections on properties, meets with tenants. Um, but the work really starts, it starts in the beginning. We do, um, you know, we, I mean, we're a small business, we've learned along the way. And I think, you know, that's really what's, uh, what it boils down to. And, so we do a really good job at, um, you know, getting to know people. We want to meet them face to face. At this point, there's no nothing better than FaceTime. Uh, we do we do reference check. We call every reference that they put down, and um, and we do credit checks and all that. So that's the typical stuff that that I think property management companies do, and it, it really helps a lot. It really, we have a great group of tenants right now. And they're, they're our partners, really, in, in making things happen. And we really, that's the way we view it, and we appreciate that. Way. And do we have challenges sometimes? We do sometimes, but very, very rarely. Very rarely do we have challenges. Um, so I think that we've sort of got the, the, the mix figured out and, and um, hope something doesn't come up that makes me eat those words. Because <laughs> <laughs> it changes every day. Um, there was a question about um, uh, what other suggestions Great Falls has received so far in the comments, flips, or online. So we got three uh, comments today. I think one was no apartments, one was um, hardware, store. hardware store, and then new town hall. was oh, and then a new town hall. Those are the three comments we've got in the suggestion box so far. <laughs> Um, and I would reiterate the suggestion box as well. If anyone has comments or is, is out talking to someone in the community and, and they've got things to say, if you can remind them there's a, there's a comment box there if they don't want to email or, or whatever. Um, it's here in the town hall for now, and if it's not here, we'll, I will be getting it up uh, across the street um, at some point. So we'll be getting that installed. Um. People talked about some things that they didn't want to see. Um, tattoo parlors, marijuana vendors, e-cigarette vendors, and also uh, no national chains. And there was also a comment about um, the quality of design, too, that he <coughs> comes with national chains. Yeah. You know, I think we're kind of in alignment. I think tattoo parlors have their place, and we would, um, um, I, I, I'm not sure it would be a viable business in, in what we'll be building there, and, and that's not something that we, I mean, I. No offense if anyone has a tattoo, but we just not, you know, that that's not in alignment with what we'd like to see. And that's, that's the way it is. Uh, you, you know, the, the marijuana, I, I have a strong opinion on that. And, um, you know, we, we're, 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 we're in a construction company and we are, you know, we have to have employees that are not on, that we drug test our employees. And with everything that's been going on lately with the marijuana business, it's very frustrating for us to find people to be able to pass a drug test and and you know be part of our team, and uh, it's very very frustrating. So we we don't 
we don't participate in that industry in, in any way. Um, that's just a choice that we've made. And I think, you know, the e-cigarette vendors, I, I don't really know much about that. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I can tell you, there's, it's not like that someone could rent a space from us and pay rent by selling these cigarettes. Will it be an accessory item they sell if we have a, if there's some sort of a store in there? Um, possibly, I don't know. Um. Oh, uh, sorry, the national chains. National chains yeah, yeah, yeah. versus I local. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess national chains sums it up because, you know, if you look at things, I mean, Aroma Joe's technically is a chain, right? It's there's a lot of locations, and um, you know, that's that's a more local chain, and I think a business that we would definitely support. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're already here in town, but I mean, that's not something that would be a challenge. And that's sort of right in with uh, local businesses. Um, and particularly access to parking for businesses. And I think we clarified later on too that um, structuring parking so that residential and business um, users wouldn't be competing for, for parking. Right, so that's, you know, we, we have spent a lot of time uh, on this particular issue. Um, and I really, am, when it comes to, um, to the parking, shared parking is really, I think, what needs to happen we don't we just don't have the real estate to give a piece of asphalt to every person that wants to park there um, so, but we do put a lot of uh, effort into making sure there's enough parking so that the businesses can be viable and residents can park <coughs> some of the ways that we do that are we look at where where is the main residence residential entrance to the property where are the business entrances right so um, if your, you know, if your main residential is on the back of a property, well, that's where people want to park for residents on the back. If your businesses usually are going to be on the front of the property, that's where they want to park. Uh, but, but I am a strong believer we are in, in shared parking, and I think it's something that really needs to. Um, sometimes it's a, it, you know, the, the parking is is a, both a real and a perceived problem, um, and I think our our challenge it, we've dealt with this quite a bit is to make sure that we have something good enough that people are going to park and, and come to. And I don't, you know, want to be talking way up here and I realize if someone can't park, they're not coming to your business and that's a real problem. But when we process it to that level and make sure that we've got um, enough options in the, in the area for people to park, uh, and if, you know, one of the things that I always say is if you really think about it, uh, any place that we want to go as humans, if it's a fun place, chances are there's a parking problem. You pull up to the place. There's all kinds of real estate and plenty of parking spots. You know, it, I mean, it's probably not a place that you're going to go and have a lot of fun at, right? So, um, we uh, it's our challenge to figure out how to balance that, and uh, we do we do work on that. Um, but but we generally aren't designating um, the the spots. We're trying to design it so that it flows well. Um, the last two comments to highlight here. Um, one was the comment about that. Um, Berwick shouldn't be an exclusionary community. Um, I think that was what Ruth's comment. And then also, I think James has added that you know residential development does not really necessarily mean greater demands <coughs> on the school. You know, and adding a, a couple students in doesn't mean you need an extra classroom and an extra teacher. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to comment to either of those. Uh, yeah, I can comment on that. And I think, I mean, I would, t I, I appreciate all of the comments, and I didn't pick up from anyone that it, that it really wanted to be exclusionary. And I appreciate that, you know, that that was pointed out. Um, I think that, you know, when we talk about, if you go to exclusionary, we just talked about, um, you know, big or chain national chains, and marijuana stores. I mean, I think in in those, you know, in those cases, um, we've got, you know, I, I have an opinion on them. Um, when it comes to the to the residential side of it, um, there won't be any exclusionary policies at all. We'll be building these things. We'll definitely have um, the, you know, a, a certain number of ADA accessible units will be part of whatever we build uh, so that, that um, if people need that, they're available. Um, I, you know, whether it's, whether there's an affordable housing component, a workforce housing component, or all market rate is really yet to be determined. And we've, we've hit that already, so I'll leave it at that. <coughs> Uh, last page we talked about parking um, elderly housing 
I, I think that falls into the mix with uh, low income, with affordable, I mean, excuse me, with workforce and with market rate. I mean, elderly housing is just one component of any one of those three. Right. And, you know, um, I think that uh, I, I wouldn't, I don't know that we would designate just an elderly section. I think one of the things that we're going to be looking to achieve in this development in general is a strong cross section of Berwick, you know, which is, which is, you know, I, I, what we what we um, strived for in Gorham at, at Station <coughs> Square, and our our ages range from five to eighty five. That's the the age range in the in the project that we have there, and I think that's what makes it work. Well, you know, we need diversity in, in everything that's there. It's got to. If not, then you begin to to uh, sort of become exclusionary, I guess, you know, and that's not what we're looking to do. Yeah. Um, other comments in general about balance in general, whether it's just income levels, as you mentioned in a re residential mix, uh, balance of storefronts and skilled labor. And uh, my takeaway from this was really, you know, sort of an integrated or holistic view of how um, this project can benefit the community and add to economic development and community vitality. And I think it was really just a call to, to keep that in mind that you're, um, you know, you're adding some, some important ingredients that will affect the, the future of the community. Right, yeah. I, and a point well taken. I think we've, in, unless uh, there's something else somebody wants to ask me on that, I think we've kind of hit it. Mm -hmm. um, Woman from the library um, talked about their their role as a community center, and that that's something that she wants to see. They're working to increase um, and maintain that in their local, um, their current location. Also, I understand. Yep, understood. Yeah. yeah. Um, an opportunity to get the next generation engaged, um, and really, I think um, seeing that. This project is a forward-thinking project that really is going to reach out to the next generation, those that don't have gray hair yet. <laughs> um, one of the closing questions was uh, about the timeline. <clears throat> What's yeah. the timeline look like? So great, great question. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we would be building something in 2020 on, on the site. Um, we've got our, our and civil engineering proposals came in yesterday. Um, we've got to take some time to process those and figure out who we're going to be working with for a team there and then we've got to add to that team. Uh, so we'll be going about that work over the next few months here to, to uh, assemble that team and get going and then we'll have a better understanding. Some of the permitting that's required is, is lengthy. So in order for us to be building in 2020 we've got to devise a plan where we can actually just figure out a, you know, whether we can build in, you know, do something in one of the buildings while the rest of it is being permitted. Not sure if that can happen or not, but that would probably be the only way we'd get building something in 2020. Um, so I think that um, the, you know, the, the major portion of it over the next six to 12 months, we'll be really working on bringing this plan together. Um, and we'd love to be able to start building right away, but it's just the, the permitting process is extensive. So that's what we'll be working on. Great. Um, and then finally, just how the public can stay informed and um, Great Falls can keep listening to continue the dialogue that we've established in the, these two listening sessions. Yeah. So uh, at any point, I mean, if the, how the public can stay informed, um, if you have, ever have a question, you feel free to, to reach us, we're pretty easy to find, and there are slips out there that, that uh, has Julie's contact information on it. Um, I will, I think we'll, take, we'll talk about scheduling some regularly, this is the last scheduled meeting that we have, but we'll put some more on the calendar and try and get those communicated out. So we'll just have some placeholders in the calendar and just whatever is whatever there is to communicate at the time, we, we'll be there for that. Um, and then uh, Julie, I think, is going to, the Facebook page, is that right? That, yeah. that seems to be a good, for anyone that uses that, um, there'll be an opportunity to communicate that way. What is that Facebook page, Julie? Julie? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Great Falls Construction. Uh, okay. You can find it pretty easily. Um, we generated the event for this listening session on that page, and we'll do the same for future ones as well. So. Um, I think we also co-hosted co it on the page with the town of Berwick as well. So 
it's um, easily seen on both of those pages. Great. Okay. Um, Any other quote? And uh, John mentioned the contact information on the table out here. There's slips. You can take these. There's also a sign-in page um, that allows Great Falls to collect emails. Um, so that when they do have information to send out to the public, you get notified of that as well, whether it's listening sessions, um, whatever information they'll be sharing. So be sure to sign in um, on the sign-in sheet if you want to be contacted. Grab one of these. There's the suggestion box for any other input you want to provide. And um, you know, these guys are super accessible. I think last, the last listening session, there was a lot of time just hanging out afterwards for conversations and stuff. Um, so please, please approach them or myself. Um, I think this is really a, a partnership between the community and Great Falls, um, and they're here to work with you. John, did you have any other closing comments or anything uh, from? I don't, are there the any other questions first? Uh, anything? Anything? Oh, good. No, I would just like to say thank you, everybody, for coming. Really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. And uh, if you have thoughts after the fact, please share them. Really appreciate hearing from you. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.